I wanted to mention here before we get to chapter 22, and I will not interrupt the reading between chapter 21 and 22 to say this because the two stories go together and I want them to flow. When we get to chapter 22, <clears throat> anyone who likes the Star Wars stories, you see the first three, the three that were made after the original. I wonder if George Lucas was inspired by what Saul did to the Lord's priests. Just a thought. I mean, no connection, obviously. But I also think it's interesting because folks who inter who like Star Wars, but, you know, I mean, well, I'm not saying that you don't. That you're obviously watching the, this, this here, but you couldn't just go out and convince anybody in the world, hey, you like Star Wars? Well, hey, here's a great story for you to read in Samuel. <laughs> but I do think those of you that watch these readings. Then came David to Nob, or Nob, to Ahimelech, the priest. And Ahimelech was afraid at the meeting of David, and said unto him, Why art thou alone, and no man with thee? And David said unto Ahimelech the priest, The king hath commanded me to a business, or commanded me a business, and hath said unto me, Let no man know anything of the business whereabout I sent thee, and what I have com commanded thee. And I have appointed my servants to such and such a place. Now therefore, what is under thine hand? Give me five loaves of bread in mine hand, or what there is present. And the priest answered David and said, There is no common bread under mine hand, but there is hallowed bread, if the young men have kept themselves at least from women. And David answered the priest and said unto him, Of a truth women have been kept from us about these three days since I came out, and the vessels of the young men are holy, and the bread is in a manner common, yea, though it were sanctified this day in the vessel. This is what Jesus spoke to the Pharisees about when the Pharisees give um, the disciples a hard time about eating from the corn on the Sabbath day. Jesus referred to this passage. So the priest gave him hallowed bread, for there was no bread there but the showbread that was taken from before the Lord to put hot bread in the day when it was taken away. Now a certain man of the servants of Saul was there that day, detained before the Lord, and his name was Doeg, an Edomite, the chiefest of the herdmen, and that belonged to Saul. And David said unto Ahimelech, And is there not... Here under thine hand spear or sword? For I have neither brought my sword nor my weapons with me, because the king's business ha ha required haste. And the priest said, The sword of Goliath the Philistine, whom thou slewest in the valley of Elah, behold, it is here, wrapped in a cloth behind the ephod. If thou wilt take that, take it. For there is no other save that here. And David said, There is none like that. Give it me. And David arose and fled that day for fear of Saul, and went to Achish, the, uh, the king of Gath. And the servant of Achish said unto him, Is not this David the king of the land? Did they not sing one to another of him in dances, saying, Saul hath slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands? And David, David laid up these words in his heart, and was sore afraid of Achish the king of Gath. I'm going to mention also, laid up these words in his heart. Remember Mary, around the birth of Jesus, laid them up in her heart. Now, why do I mention that? Because that book was written in Greek. That book was written by someone else. That book was written, you know, in the New Testament, obviously. The King James translators did not take common phrases of the day and casually toss them into the Bible laid up these words in his heart, or laid them up in her heart. In fact, I'll point something else out, and hopefully I don't monkey up the reading of the word, hopefully not, you know, interrupting any thoughts that you might be given of the Lord throughout this. If so, just turn me off here. 
But you notice that there are words that are um, not very many, but nonetheless there are words that are italicized. See, when the King James Bible um, fellows, you know, couldn't, the words wouldn't make a sentence plainly. Like he's like, here's there. There is none like that. Give it me. And David said, is none like that. Give it me. If we took out there, so they had to put in these words that kind of make this sentence complete in English. But it certainly doesn't detract from the meaning or add to the meaning when they did that. So why do I bring that up? It's because they were very careful and they even italicized, had these words italicized to show that these were words that they had to use in order to make a sentence. So obviously laid up these words in his heart and is not italicized. So what, what's the point of this whole thing? It is this. God's word is very... I mean, this isn't a common phrase back in the day. I mean, it wouldn't be a common phrase between the two eras of time. But yet God used them that way and to hold his word together. Maybe you get what I'm talking about. I sure hope I haven't just added to the length of this whole thing and not made a point. <laughs> And he changed his behavior before them, and feigned himself mad in their hands, and scrabbled on the door of the gate, and let his spittle fall down upon his beard. Then said Achish unto his servant, Lo, ye have seen the man is mad, wherefore then have ye brought him to me? Have I need of a madman that ye have brought this fellow to play the madman in my presence? Shall this fellow come into my house? <laughs>